The topic of this National Beef Quality Audit webinar is impact of morbidity on performance and carcass grading of feedlot cattle. My name is Eric Belke and I am a professional services veterinarian and production consultant for Feedlot Health Management Services. Pictured here are the team members from the Okotoks Alberta office that make up our veterinarian production consultant team. For the listeners that are interested in putting a face with this voice, I am the individual wearing a brown jacket and red tie and my profile picture is on the right hand side being second from the top. This is an outline of the subjects we chose in order to cover the topic of how morbidity affects performance and carcass grading of feedlot cattle. We will begin by reviewing diseases observed in feedlot cattle, then move to some of the early work that had the objective of elucidating the economic impact of bovine respiratory disease on the performance and carcass characteristics of feedlot cattle. Next we will discuss the results from a large pen observational study and then move to a small pen study in which both healthy and clinically ill calves were taken to a common body weight. Finally we will conclude with a discussion of recommendations for managing BRD in the feedlot. Bovine respiratory disease, which will be abbreviated as BRD throughout the remainder of this webinar, is a term which refers to illness that can be caused by a wide variety of bacteria and viruses that compromise the function of the bovine respiratory tract. Histophilosis is a term that refers to a disease caused by the specific bacterium Histophilus somni. In feedlot calves, histophilosis can affect the respiratory tract, therefore can sometimes be considered to be part of BRD. However, this pathogen can also cause distinct pathological changes in body systems other than the respiratory tract. So that is why the disease caused by Histophilus somni is oftentimes classified separate from BRD. Metabolic diseases are also observed in the feedlot, with the two predominant being ruminal bloat and carbohydrate overload. Additionally, lamenesses of various causes are observed, with the primary causes being arthritis, foot rot, and to a lesser extent, hairy heel wart. And of course, there are several miscellaneous diseases that occur sporadically, such as congestive heart failure, prolapses, hardware disease, and a whole host of other infrequent diseases. Of all the diseases mentioned at this point, BRD is the most common cause of morbidity in feedlot calves, which makes it the most economically significant disease. Given the economic significance of BRD, the remainder of this presentation will focus on the effect of just this disease process. However, because some forms of histophilosis can also be considered to be part of the BRD complex, it is most accurate to say that both of these diseases were considered as causes of morbidity in the studies that will be discussed. Some of the early work indicating the effect of BRD on animal performance and carcass grading was the 1992-93 to Ranch Derail Summer Report, and the results from this report suggested a large economic impact of BRD on health costs, animal performance, and carcass characteristics. More specifically, this report detailed several variables from sick and non-sick animals, which are depicted in the middle and far right columns respectively. Pharmaceutical costs at this time were reported to be over $27 per sick animal. Data from this report indicated that sick animals had an average daily gain 93% of that of their non-sick cohorts, with such being 2.68 and 2.88 pounds per day for sick and non-sick calves. These calves were shipped at live weights of 1,148 and 1,183 pounds. Carcass characteristics are depicted in the bottom four rows of this table, and a favorable trend in quality grade is observed for the non-sick cattle relative to the sick cattle. It is important to keep in mind that the sick cattle were shipped at a lesser slaughter weight, and this cannot be disregarded when interpreting the grading data. Once the factors in this table were considered, this report suggested the non-sick cattle were just over $90 per head more profitable than the sick cattle. However, one of the assumptions that was made to come to this difference was that the dry matter to gain conversion ratio differed between the sick and non-sick calves. As we subsequently review the results from peer-reviewed publication, this initial paradigm will be challenged, which, at the end of the day, results in BRD having a lesser economic impact. In 1993, Jim and others published the results from a field investigation of the economic impact of BRD in feedlot calves in the Canadian Veterinary Journal. The objective of this study was to compare the performance and carcass characteristics of calves displaying clinical signs of respiratory disease very early in the feeding period to those of healthy calves. To achieve this objective, calves were processed on day minus three. Any calves with a fever at the time of processing were not eligible for allocation. 
A rectal temperature was then recorded for each eligible calf on day minus one and zero, and those with a fever on two consecutive days were allocated to one of the 16 sick pens, and those without a fever were allocated to one of the 16 well pens. In total, just over 500 calves were allocated. This is a tabular representation of the results, with the mean values for each variable associated with the sick calves being found on the left, and that for the well calves being found on the right. Daily dry matter intake was not statistically different between the sick and the well calves. Also, there was no difference in average daily gain when comparing the two groups. Therefore, there was no difference in the dry matter to gain ratio between the sick and the well calves, which was a very important finding from this study and was much different than the existing paradigm at that time that calves that had suffered from BRD were less efficient than those that had no indications of BRD. Following a similar theme as was observed with the performance data, there were no statistical differences when comparing any of the carcass characteristics between the two groups. Given these results, it was concluded that there were no differences in performance or carcass characteristics when comparing calves that had displayed clinical signs of BRD early in the feeding period to those that did not exhibit such clinical signs. Therefore, in the economic model for this trial, there were no significant differences in terms of profit per pin. Now we are going to fast forward a little bit to 2011 when Galen Erickson and others published an article titled Morbidity, Feedlot Performance, and Carcass Grading Performance in the Nebraska Beef Report. Even though these data were published in Nebraska, the data were actually from two commercial feedlots here in Alberta, from cattle that were finished in the years 2007 and 2008. From the population of cattle finished at these two feedlots, there were 33,073 individual carcass records, which also had individual animal treatment histories linked to them. All of these data were extracted, and for this analysis, each animal was categorized as receiving either zero, one, or two or more treatments for BRD. This table depicts the results from Erickson and others' large pen observational study. Average daily gains for animals treated zero, one, and two or more times were 3.12, 3.10, and 2.94. Numerically, the average daily gain of animals treated zero or one times are quite similar, which is similar to what was reported by Jim and others in 1993. However, there is a statistically significant trend for average daily gain to decrease as BRD treatments increase from zero to two or more treatments. The next variable that is highlighted is the percent of cattle that graded choice, which is the USDA quality grade that is comparable to Canada AAA. 51.3% of the cattle with no BRD treatments graded choice, and this percentage decreased with increasing BRD treatments. Following a similar trend, on the 5-point USDA yield grade scale, steers that received zero BRD treatments had an average yield grade of 3.17 and yield grade decreased linearly with increasing number of BRD treatments. Now, caution is warranted when interpreting these data, as there was no difference in days on feed between the three groups, which resulted in a linear decrease in hot carcass weight with increasing treatment for BRD. Returning to the carcass characteristics, these data indicate that BRD treatments resulted in a less marbled, leaner carcass, which are two characteristics that can be associated with a lighter hot carcass weight. Therefore, hot carcass weight must be considered and the observed effect on carcass quality and yield grade cannot be attributed solely to the number of BRD treatments. Therefore, to sum up the results from this large pen observational study, it can be concluded that when non-treated and animals treated for BRD are taken to a common days on feed, there is a linear decrease in carcass yield and quality grade. However, because these cattle are subsequently lighter at the time of harvest, Carcass grading is confounded with hot carcass weight, which does not make it possible to isolate the effect of the number of BRD treatments. But stay tuned, as this one confounding factor, which made the carcass results a little bit difficult to interpret, had been examined and reported by Holland and others in 2010. These authors published a paper in the Journal of Animal Science titled, Effect of Bovine Respiratory Disease During Preconditioning on Subsequent Feedlot Performance, Carcass Characteristics, and Beef Attributes. The objectives of this study were to observe the effects of segregating based on BRD events during the preconditioning period on feedlot performance and carcass characteristics when heifers are fed to a similar compositional endpoint, which for the purpose of this study was a similar market body weight. To achieve this objective, 
fall-placed heifer calves were assembled at an order buyer facility in Kentucky and delivered to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Then, for a 63-day preconditioning period, calves were observed for clinical signs of BRD. After 63 days, calves were placed into BRD treatment categories and randomly allocated to pen within that treatment category. The categories were 0, 1, 2, and 3 treatments for BRD, and 13 animals were categorized as being chronically ill. This table summarizes the performance data and the body weight at the end of the preconditioning period and average daily gain from arrival to the end of the preconditioning period are highlighted. These data indicate that calves requiring an increased number of BRD treatments had a decreased average daily gain during the preconditioning period and a lower body weight at the end of the preconditioning period. Now, what is really interesting about this data set is what happened in the finishing period. I would like to focus your attention on the red box, which is the gain to feed ratio in the first 65 days of the finishing period. Keep in mind this is the inverse of a feed to gain ratio which is sometimes reported and the gain to feed ratio indicates the kilograms of gain for every kilogram of dry matter. Therefore a bigger number is better. What was observed in this trial was a linear increase in feed efficiency with increasing BRD treatments. Moving to the performance results for the entire finishing period and again focusing on the red box at the bottom there was a linear increase in feed efficiency observed with increasing BRD treatments. Carcass characteristics are indicated in this table and the red box is highlighting days on feed and hot carcass weight. With the exception of the chronically ill animals which were killed at a slightly lesser hot carcass weight than any of the other cattle, calves from the 0, 1, 2, and 3 treatment categories had very similar hot carcass weights. In order to achieve this, the animals that were treated three times during the preconditioning period were fed almost 20 days longer than those treated zero, one, or two times. And when the cattle were taken to a similar carcass weight endpoint, there were no statistical differences when comparing the quality and yield grades of cattle with differential BRD treatment histories. That being said, some numerical differences were observed when comparing the different BRD treatment categories. For instance, when looking at the percentage of U.S. yield grade threes in each category, the range is from 47% in calves treated zero times in the preconditioning period to 30% in the chronically ill calves. Given this numerical difference, yet lack of statistical significance, it leads one to consider that there was likely a great amount of intra-category or intra-pin variation. Nonetheless, with this experimental design and indicated comparisons, no statistical differences in carcass grade distributions were detected. Holland and others concluded that clinical BRD did reduce body weight and average daily gain during the preconditioning period. However, segregating these clinical cases from non-clinical cases allowed for the observation of a compensatory performance response in calves that were sick during the preconditioning period, and when these calves were fed to a common body weight, there were no statistical differences in either yield grade or quality grade. We are now going to switch gears and move from reviewing trial results into some practical recommendations for managing BRD in the feedlot. Several factors have been identified that contribute to an animal's risk of acquiring BRD. Two of the more important factors are age and arrival weight. An extreme example to illustrate the effect of these two factors is that a greater amount of BRD morbidity would be expected in a group of cattle placed in the feedlot as 500 pound calves when compared to that of a group of cattle placed in the feedlot as 1,000 pound yearlings. Gender is also a risk factor. In Western Canada, there is not as much of a difference between males and females as there is a difference when comparing bulls to steers with the bulls having a greater risk for morbidity. Time of year not only has to do with the adverse weather conditions adding risk, but it also has to do with the degree of commingling that occurs in the fall of the year as many of the calves that are weaned are commingled at an auction mart before arriving at the feedlot. Moving to acquisition type, there is a greater risk associated with auction mart derived calves when compared to ranch direct calves and this is very much a function of the pathogen load and diversity of such that each of the two classifications of calves are exposed to. Finally, acquisition location is linked with travel time to the feedlot, with the longer travel times being associated with a greater amount of morbidity. Therefore, whenever a group of calves is purchased, all of these factors need to be taken into consideration when formulating a BRD management plan. There are several tools that are available for the control of BRD. To begin with, once animals arrive, 
Procedures and products administered at arrival processing should be tailored to the risk classification of each individual purchase group. Likewise, disease detection and treatment protocols should be appropriate given the risk factors associated with each individual group of cattle. Among other things, this will include frequency and intensity of riding pens and sick animal therapy selection. An important component of managing BRD in the feedlot is disease monitoring. The adoption of shoot side, cowboy friendly software by feedlots has greatly enhanced our ability to monitor what is occurring from a disease standpoint on the feedlot. Going hand in hand with recording morbidity and treatment events is the monitoring of the cause of death in all mortalities and linking all of this information back to each group of cattle at the individual animal level. With this infrastructure being in place, it allows for real-time monitoring of disease outbreaks and the mitigation of the economic losses associated with these outbreaks. Unfortunately, even with all of the above mentioned tools in place, disease outbreaks can still periodically occur. Therefore, we strongly recommend that an action plan for different types of outbreaks be in place so that immediate action can be taken in the face of an outbreak, and as a cattle owner, you are not caught mid-air when the wheels fall off like the unfortunate individual depicted in the figure at the bottom. In summary, clinical BRD can have an adverse effect on average daily gain, especially early in the feeding period. However, there are no indications that feed efficiency is adversely affected when the entire feeding period is considered. Segregating cattle affected by BRD and feeding them to a common body weight will minimize and possibly eliminate differences in carcass yield and quality grade. And lastly, arrival, treatment, and outbreak control programs should be tailored to individual groups of cattle based on risk factors to cost-effectively control BRD. The full citations for the publications that were referenced throughout this webinar are outlined here. I will take the time to reiterate each of these references so that you are allowed a chance to write down any of these citations in the case that you would like to read the full papers. Erickson and others in 2011, Nebraska Beef Report, which can be found at the indicated URL. Holland and others, 2010. This article was published in the Journal of Animal Science, Volume 88 starting on page 2486. Jim and others, 1993. This article was published in the Canadian Veterinary Journal, volume 34, beginning on page 668. And the 1992-93 to 93 Texas A&M Ranch to Rail Summary, which can be found at the indicated URL. Again, this was a national beef quality audit webinar and the topic was impact of morbidity on performance and carcass grading in feedlot cattle. My name is Eric Belke with Feedlot Health Management Services and I would be happy to discuss any of these topics with you in more depth if you have any questions concerning what has been presented. Thank you.